40. Calculate delta G notch for each of the following reactions from the equilibrium constant at the temperature given. Okay, cool. So we have our equation here, chloride gas, Cl2, plus bromide gas, which is Br2 gas, yields 2BrCl gas. They give us a temperature and they give us that equilibrium constant, 4.7 times 10 to the negative second. Now, whenever they give you an equilibrium constant and they're asking for a delta G, there's basically only one formula that we can use. So just know that if you're doing K values with delta Gs, there's gonna be one big equation and there's two variations depending on what you're solving for. If we're solving for delta G, which we are here, we're gonna use this equation right here. Delta G equals negative RT ln of K. So if we're trying to solve for that delta G, right? We're trying to solve for that free energy, Gibbs free energy. Notch just means that we're, you know, standard state. We just need to know RT and K. Well, what's R? Well, R is a constant value. R is 8.314 in this case. Now the units, if we're using 8.314, which is what I like to use, this is always joules per mole times Kelvin. So if we have Kelvin in the R value, the temperature has to be in Kelvin, right? Units try to cancel out. So they give it to me in Celsius. That's okay. I can go from Celsius to Kelvin, right? Celsius to Kelvin, <laughs> Celsius to Kelvin plus 273. If you want to be more specific, it's 273.15, which is what I'll do. So I'll take 25 plus 273, room temperature is 298.15. And that's the number that's going in in here. Now I just need that equilibrium constant, capital K. Now they gave me a KP. Does it matter that it's a P? No, I didn't write down specifically KP. There's so many different equilibrium constants. Could have been a KC, could have been a KA, KB, KSP. Doesn't matter, just as long as it's a, you know, equilibrium constant value. 4.7 times 10 to the negative second in this case. We have all the variables. Let's just plug in and solve. Delta G equals the negative is in the equation. So I'm gonna take that 8.314 and then I'm going to times it by the room temp, 298.15. And then I'm gonna times it by ln, the natural log of 4.7 times 10 to the negative second. Good thing about using a TI-84, which I love to use, is that I could plug this into the calculator in one shot, and the calculator will understand what functions to do first. So let's plug this in. Negative 8.314 times the 298.15. Now I'm going to say times, find that natural log, which is over here, ln. And now I have 4.7. Now this is in scientific notation, right? What I like to use is the EE button. I don't like to put in times 10 to the because sometimes um, the calculator won't really understand what you're doing if you're not using parentheses. So I like to use the EE button. That's the second comma button. And this means times 10 to the. So it's 4.7 times 10 to the. Now all I gotta do is just put negative two and then enter. Boom, there it goes, 7,000. 579 and joules per mole is the unit because those weren't canceled out. Now, this is a big number. So generally, if you're solving for a delta G, it's going to be in kilojoules per mole. So all we have to do is just convert the moles into kilojoules. Sorry, not the moles, the joules into kilojoules. All you gotta do is just divide by a thousand. So I'll just take this number divided by a thousand and then use the appropriate um, sig figs, right? This had a lot of sig figs in it, but this one only had two. So my answer can only have two sig figs. So my delta G for this reaction is 7.6 because the seven rounds that five up to a six. And now we are good to go. Let's box this off and call it a day. All right, cool. There's the answer, guys. Really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends, tell your classmates about the school channel. Love helping you guys out in any of your education endeavors. Um, happy studying. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.